Today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online is brought to you by Blue Apron. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals for free at blueapron.com slash ghost. Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, a spirit haunts a restaurant late at night when only the staff are present. Did sleep paralysis take over a living body, or was it something else? And an entity manipulates children's toys on a nightly basis. But why? Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855 855- 853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That indeed it is. 855-853-4802 is our phone number. You can write it on the website realghoststoriesonline.com or email your audio file to us at Tony T-O-N-Y at realghoststoriesonline.com. And be sure to uh, be a part of our Facebook group. If you like us on Facebook, thank you for that. Lots of you there. We have a group page now. Everybody can kind of get together and chat about the uh, stories. Just uh, look up Real Ghost Stories Online group and be a part of that. Tony and Sean Reed joining you this uh, this fine day. And how are you today? I just uh, ate a banana. You just ate a banana. That's a good way to start a day or an uh, evening or, or whatever it is yeah. that uh, that you're you're beginning uh, right now. I call it a pre-appetizer appetizer to the dinner. Do you enjoy bananas? Is it is it like a fruit that you you actively say, "You know what? I'm looking forward to having this banana." In um risk of sounding like a tremendous loser? Yeah. <laughs> I, I enjoy bananas in my life. It was really? a, I don't I don't think it was a kick per se, but um, it started, I believe, uh, probably at a young age mm-hmm. um, or way back. But current day life, I uh, wanted to spice up uh, oatmeal breakfast, popped a banana on there. And uh, we really have become a <laughs> two peas in a pod, if you will, over the last six, seven years of my life. You know, I, I, a lot of people love oatmeal. A lot of people love bananas. Those are actually two two foods that that I could could not be more just really. I, I could completely take or leave more than anything else. I, I will eat bananas because they're good for you. I, I've, I've never gone to the store and saw ooh bananas. I can't wait. I have to get some of those. Same with oatmeal. I've never been like going down the the cereal aisle and going oh. Oatmeal. I can't wait to have that for breakfast. It's more like, uh, I guess if you know, I'm ever, there's nothing else in my home, and and I need to heat this up. I can I can eat that. I remember being at a radio station once, and that was like the only thing they had. There was no like refrigerator. There was no snack counter. There was nothing. It was no vending machine. But the morning show had a package of oatmeal in the upper cabinet of the kitchenette, and I was working late nights, and I remember going. I'm really hungry. There's nothing else here. I guess I'll eat the oatmeal. And I think that was probably the last time I ate the oatmeal. Yeah. Say, I would have thought you went the rest of your shift just starving, your stomach talking to you because you weren't going to eat the oatmeal. I, I sucked it up and I ate the oatmeal. And I think that was probably the last time I had it. It was probably roughly 15 years ago in a cornfield in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, which is where the radio station was. And, um, well, next time you're in Arkansas, I got a big tub for you with your name on it. <laughs> I can't wait. Oatmeal and bananas at Sean's house. Now that sounds like a party. <laughs> All day or day. 855-853-4802 is our number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your ghost stories with us. Let's jump over to our first story of the day. It says, hi, my name is Vi. I, it uh, it's, uh, spells like the letter V in the alphabet. I'm from Vietnam. Uh, I listened to your show uh, last month. I enjoy every story on the show. Sorry if there are any mistakes with my English. I want to tell my stories of when I used to work at a restaurant. I've been working there for about six months. There's no Nothing to make you feel scared or anything that I feel weird. I uh, worked as a cashier. I usually have to go to work early to prepare things for that day. There was a guy who worked at the, at the bar, usually goes as soon as me, and whenever we work together, I often hear him call my name. He has a tiny voice, so it's like a whisper to me. I looked at him and said, what? He just looked back at me with a confused look and said, he didn't say anything. It happened so many times that he teased me and called me uh, and called uh that my friend, because they like to call my name. It first happened when I, my manager was there with him. I was going down the stairs, heard my manager call my name clearly as day. I like to try to 
call back in a hurry, so I stopped and answered back. They both looked at me confused. I think it happens so regularly that I can't tell the difference. So, try to call me, or that keeps continuing to try to call me, and nobody at the restaurant has ever experienced anything like it except for me. And it only happened when I was in the restaurant, not at home, and not anywhere else. First, I just thought I was crazy or something, but after two to three times, I started to believe there was something with this restaurant. Second story, when my friend and I were cleaning the area, and my other friend, I'll call him B and D, are my friend's names, were cleaning the uh, area. If you stand in area A, you can see area B in opposite. So D told us that he saw me, my friend, who were cleaning uh, areas, the areas. He wonders why no one helps him cleaning the area. He's the tallest man at my work, and he has very dark skin, so you can spot him everywhere. But he had the day off that day, so we thought the other friend was teasing us. But he swore up and down that he saw the other man, who was not at work that day, and he said he saw his back and his dark skin like a real person. We felt so weird, so we shake it off, continued our work. At the end of that day, I told the security guard whom I am close to and considered him as my family about the experience. And he said to me that when he worked night shift there, he can hear the sound of chairs and tables move by themselves. He went to check every time, but there was nobody there. He told me sometimes he looked at the stairs and there'd be a child there. He said we hadn't done anything terrible, so they don't have a right to hurt us. He's the most stringent security that we have. One time, a guard was so scared that he couldn't sleep and sat in the front of the restaurant until sunrise. I believe... The others have a lot of experiences, too, but they don't want to scare the employees there, so they don't talk about that. Thanks for reading my stories. Hope you have a good day. I would agree. That sounds like a fairly haunted workplace. That right there is your uh, classic case of haunted workplace. Have you, uh, I think we've talked about this a little bit, of haunted workplaces. Have you ever had a, a, an experience at uh, at a workplace that, what would you say would be the, the most haunted workplace you've ever been at? It's a place that uh, we may worked uh, at together. It was the old uh, WIFC building back in Wisconsin. Really? Uh, the original one that was kind of on the corner there, the little one-story thing that I think is like a fireplace store now? Yeah, so not to be confused. The time I went downstairs in the radio station building, and what was I thought a ghost was actually a coworker of ours living there between apartments. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in more recent memory that I can think, it was a door opening and closing, studio door. Really? And this is the situation back when there was we worked 24 hours a day, when you're possibly the only person in the radio station, and you know you're the only person in the radio station, uh, and could hear the, the studio door open and close, like somebody just going in and then coming out. Mm-hmm. And I was the only one there going to get a uh, soda in the staff kitchen. So, you know, mildly creepy, a little bit worse than having to eat oatmeal. A little bit, uh, a little bit worse than that. Yeah, I don't I think I would uh, I take the oatmeal over the ghost. I had never heard that story. I, I don't I, I didn't know I, there was any stories of that building. I know it was old and I think it had been the radio station for a long period of time. Uh, probably, I don't, I'm going to guess like 30, 40 years at least in that one building, but I had never heard any ghost stories out of that one. That's the first. So I would imagine that'd be interesting now that it is a fireplace door. If, uh, if there are any, now that it is no longer a, uh, a building, a radio station, if there's still people that hear things. Or yeah. it just went away when it went from a radio station to the fireplace R Us. I think it, maybe you have more ghosts in there, especially if it's ghosts of radio people who are kind of pissed off. They're, they're, they're haunting their radio station, and there's no radio station there anymore. It's just a bunch of fireplaces. <laughs> or you randomly hear a voice talking about this Saturday only. Get this fireplace for only 79. It's it's. it's Free handshakes and one-way trips to Portage. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, just randomly talking off in the corner. 855-853-4802 is our number. Let's go over to this story. Henrik says, I'm from Sweden. Recently discovered your channel and thought I'd share my story with you. The experience I had still haunted me as I cannot explain what it was or what I felt. Happened in the summer of 2013. My girlfriend and I went on a vacation to visit her aunt. They had bought a brand new house in the hillside facing the sea, among other homes. 
We were only going to spend the night there. As we got ready for bed, we made sure the bedroom door had closed properly so the cat wouldn't get in. Around one in the morning, I woke up and saw my girlfriend was standing at the door, and I asked her, what are you doing? The door was open, and I saw someone in the kitchen, she replied. We both thought that maybe it's her aunt running around. As we went back to bed, we both fell asleep somewhere between three and four. I woke up shaking. Whole bed was shaking. I couldn't move my upper body as if someone or something was sitting on my chest. I remember that I grabbed my girlfriend's hand and squeezed it as hard as I could to get her to wake up and help me. Instantly, it stopped when she woke up and the pressure against my chest disappeared. The two beds that we had put together had separated and they were quite heavy. At first, I thought it was like sleep paralysis, but it's it had that uh, before and this felt nothing like that. And I could move my arms and legs and it was all gone as fast as she woke up. And also that the bed had shaken apart from the other bed convinced me of something else. We asked her aunt the day after if she was in the kitchen, but she said no. We told her what happened a few years after with my girlfriend's grandmother present, and the grandmother said to my aunt, I told you, you do have something in the house. She explained that she had also stayed the night there, but she was sleeping on the couch in the living room, and she felt something or someone lying down behind her and got closer. But when she turned around... There was no one there. I have no idea what we encountered, but from my view and experience, it felt dark. Thanks for an excellent show. Keep up the superb work. I'm not an EPP member yet, but I will be someday soon. P.S. Sorry for the English, but I hope it's understandable. There you go. Vacation with a ghost. And I, I think one of the most disturbing things that could happen is if you're you're lying in bed and suddenly the bed starts shaking. That that to me that that would be very very troubling. Honey, what's happening? Honey, honey. And then the second that he woke or she woke up, I'm not sure who yeah. woke up, but he went away. I, I, I don't know how I would. I, I, I could not go back to sleep. That seems like one of those stories. where oh, We went back to sleep and it was all good. But uh, that that to me, I mean, it, it's troubling. Have you experienced an earthquake yet being in uh, in Arkansas with all the earthquakes in the Midwest these days? I have not. I have not ever experienced uh, any type of natural disaster. I'm currently finding to knock on. <laughs> Find a lot of wood. Yeah, because uh, the, uh, the experiencing even just the smallest of earthquakes can be rather disturbing. And at least it's something you can kind of write off some experiences on of, well, it's an earthquake. But when you got something that, that is that specific, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's it's uh, easy to write off. That is a, uh, a situation where interesting that the grandmother made reference to it so it was not a uh, it was not a visitor that was specific to visiting one specific person yeah grandma sounds like she was uh, uh, experienced to this as well I think grandma has yeah has had a, a time or two uh, encounter with whatever that uh, that was but was it going to speak grandma has a sick and twisted sense of humor and she likes to celebrate April Fool's Day <laughs> every day and just screw with the family and that is, that's why no one visits grandma because she just freaks oh, everybody out oh Bonnie 855-853-4802 is our number at Real Ghost Stories Online hey uh, if you've not tried out Blue Apron yet it is totally totally something you need to at least give a shot to. I've been using it uh, for years, well before they were a supporter of the show. Blue Apron delivers farm fresh ingredients and step-by-step recipes right to your door. We just got our uh, our shipment today actually uh, of Blue Apron. All different sorts of meal plans. You can mix and match these two. Two-person meal plans, family meal plans, even wine plans. You can choose uh, two to three recipes a week in those two-person plans. You can choose two, three, or four recipes a week in a family meal plan. So basically you can cut out going to the grocery Grocery store, standing in line, uh, or uh, being at a grocery store and being like, "What happened to society?" I have that moment every now and then when I'm at uh, a uh, a certain grocery store. I'm just like, "Okay, I'm good. I'm uh, I'm just going to stick with this." Uh, anyway, check it out for yourself. Blue Apron they deliver all that farm fresh stuff to you right to your door. Pre portioned ingredients, step by step recipes, and can be cooked in under 45 minutes. Menu changes every week based on what's in season, and it's designed by Blue Apron's in house culinary. Team. You don't want to miss out on uh, some of the uh, recipes I got in store for August. Smoky shrimp and polenta with fresh corn and sweet peppers. Looks like kind of a, an interesting take on shrimp and grits. Chicken lo mein with broccoli and marinated cucumbers. Smoky cheeseburgers. 
uh, with sweet potatoes. All sorts of great stuff on the menu for uh, for August. Right now, you can get your uh, first three meals absolutely free. Just go to blueapron.com slash ghost, blueapron.com slash ghost. Get your first three meals absolutely free. Check it out for yourself. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. 855-853-4802 is our number. Let's go to this letter. Hey guys, just wanted to say love your podcast. We just recently stumbled upon it and I'm hooked. Anyway, I guess I'll jump right in. I've always been super intrigued by the paranormal. Well, I've never had anything actually happen to me, but I've wanted or wished for it to for so long. Anyway, what I'm about to tell you actually happened to my sister-in-law and my brother uh, around, uh, my brother was around to experience it a few times as well. So my sister-in-law used to rent an apartment in Corpus Christi, Texas. I won't mention the name because it's changed so many times because of bad reviews. Yes, the activity is that extreme. It all started when my sister-in-law's roommate received a text from my uh, sale at 3 a.m. Not a drunk text because they had class the next day that uh, said in all caps, wake up, Chuck. Well, my sis is the uh, the least teachy person I've ever, uh, ever encountered and had one of those old school flip phones or tech persons I've ever uh, encountered. And she had one of those old flip phones at the time and didn't even know how to do caps. Not to mention she looked through her sent text and there was nothing, but her roommate showed her and it was definitely a text from her number. They thought it was weird, but continued on with their carefree college selves. My sis is super claustrophobic, so she's always opening windows and stuff. Well, one day before they all went to the pool, she had all windows open, never locked the door. When they came back from the pool, the front and the back door had been bolted shut from the inside and all the windows were shut and locked. They had to get maintenance to come because no one was inside to let them in. Another night, her roommate came to ask her if she had put all of her stuffed animals on her windowsill. She was like, um, no, why would I do that? She went to take a look and sure enough, there were like five stuffed animals lined up on her window. Weird. One night, my brother was staying over, and they had the ceiling fan on low. In the middle of the night, it randomly started spiraling out of control. They both thought it was going to come off the ceiling until it came to a complete stop. By the time the bathroom locked with no one inside, once they got it unlocked, they still couldn't get it open because the drawers from the cabinet had been pulled out, blocking the door from opening. They had to get maintenance to come and take the door off the hinges just to get back in. She said they tried to get out of their lease, and the leasing agent said their apartment was so haunted, they opted out of free rent and moved out. She said she would hear someone call her name down the hallway when she was sleeping. I asked if the complex had any history of people dying or if it was built on burial grounds of some sort, and she said it was said to have been knocked down in a hurricane, face down in the water, and the leasing agent said there were people trapped inside. Anyway, she said there were so many Chuck stories that she couldn't remember them all. I was in shock when she told me all this, so I had to share with you guys. Thanks for taking the time to read my story. Keep up the good work, Sarah. Haunted apartments. You ever, you've ever you had your fair share of apartments, <laughs> <laughs> to put it lightly. Um, uh, for a while there, it almost seemed like every time I talked, you're like, hey, I'm moving across town. Okay. Yeah. Um, I laugh because I don't want to cry. <laughs> well, you- it's one of those things you have to ask yourself. How annoying is that leaky faucet now? <laughs> and the thing is, those things can be fixed. How many things in, in, in your life of moving from apartment to apartment are things now you can look back on and go, I could have fixed that. That could have been. I mean, it's not that bad. <laughs> um, when, you, when you go out to your parking lot and you see a moving truck and you sigh realizing, oh, this time it's not mine. You know you've moved a bit too much. But I would think... Uh, that that puts all the, the, the renting horror stories uh, not so bad. Makes them not so bad. I can't even imagine moving into a place and filling out a maintenance request and having several times hearing things or this, that, or the other, and they finally say, I, we've fixed everything. We've given you 17 new faucets. It's not us. And then you find out, oh, you built this place. Where there was a hurricane yeah. and an old apartment building. Thanks. You should probably put that in the lease. And a lot of people died. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where we, homes, 
have a lot more, I, I think, requirements as far as, as what needs to be disclosed about them. I believe there is something if someone dies in the house that needs to be disclosed. Uh, but if it's a new structure, they're probably not. It's just new structure, and then it's it's kind of it's like washed away, pardon the pun of a hurricane. But um, that's, uh, th- that's, I believe, how that all works. Have you ever had any anything in an apartment where you said, OK, I'm done with this one because of something other than like a bad faucet or a bad neighbor? Anything paranormal? No. What, what I thought was and then that comes to be the, the neighbor. Um, but uh, of all things that you you uh, experience renting in apartments, noisy neighbors, um, I, I can't. No. I can't. There's still time, though, as I am currently <laughs> renting. So I will update you as uh, updates become available. It can still happen. I have one occurrence that happened to me, and it would actually happen at my very first apartment within the first six months of me being on my own. So, I mean, talk about, like, uh, if there was ever going to be a moment where I was going to go and go back and live in my parents' basement, I guess that would have been it. But I didn't do it. I stayed there. I put a crucifix above my bed, and it all <laughs> seemed to stop. Uh <laughs> So I don't know, but it was, um, I I call it a sleep paralysis experience, but I don't know. It was weird. This was in Wausau. This was the first apartment above the bookstore. It was, I was in bed and, and I could, I, I sat up and this is what makes it, I question the paralysis end of it because I physically sat up when you have sleep paralysis, you're stuck. You don't move. You can't move. But I, something, I woke me up, I sat up and I, I, just felt insanely uncomfortable, and and I shut my eyes. So I have no idea what I what was in front of me or what I was looking at, but my eyes were shut. And the only way I can really describe it is it felt as if something, it felt like a cloud, if you will, moved through me really slowly. But as it moved through me, made me shake, like not convulsing, but almost, you know, like you're panic attack or or really really nervous or really really cold to where your body is vibrating essentially and it was just the weirdest feeling in the world and then as soon as it happened it ended and it was done i could move again and i and the funny thing is i criticize people who are like and i went back to sleep after that i went back to sleep but (laughs) i don't know I, I don't think I knew what else to do. I was too afraid to get up. I was too afraid to look around the room. I literally put the blanket over my head. And eventually, you know, I was trying to figure out what to do. And I think I just fell back asleep. But uh, that was the only weird thing that ever happened there. I did put the cross above my bed the next day. I think I got it at like my confirmation or something. And it was in a box. And I put it up and never happened again. But I did start talking to some paranormal people in the area asking about stories like that. And they kind of explain sleep paralysis and there's elements of it that seem like it could be that. But it also uh, points to some interesting things of the... I believe it was called Shepherd and Shallard. I don't know if it's still there. It's a sporting goods store that was basically behind the wall of where my apartment was, behind where my bed was, where I was literally sitting up. There's a stairwell uh, right across the alleyway there. And people have stories of seeing a woman floating up and down the stairwell carrying a child. Uh, and, And this would have been literally physically probably about seven feet from where my bed was, you know, with a wall separating the two. Um, so I heard that story. I'm like, well, that's pretty creepy. And that was right there. So I don't know. I, I, I have nothing else to, uh, to share or experiences that occurred there, but some interesting, uh, interesting location or questionable location for something like that to be happening. It could have been her and her son. They had to get some skis for him. Yeah, He's just ready with it. Yeah, was it in the winter? Just no, passing through. Exactly, just passing through, and and that was that. But uh, weird experience, and I'm, I'm happy that was the only uh, experience I ever had. I had some other questionable apartments, but nothing, uh, nothing paranormal about them. Eight five five eight five three forty eight zero two is our number. Let's go to a caller. Hi, you're on the air. Hi. So I'm about um, twenty one. I'm a college student, and I've just been, you know. Going about life, you know, I don't, I hang out with friends. I, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not too, um, I don't too crazy of a life, but I have like, you know, fun on the side or whatever. And, you know, pretty normal sleep schedule or whatever for the most part. But I've just been noticing that I tend to have, um, 
at least lately, a reoccurrence of dreams that have sort of actualized themselves and manifested themselves in my everyday life. And I feel like you've had a, an episode or, you know, a podcast that is very, like, similar to... But anyway, this has basically happened. Or it's been talked about before. And I, I just, I can't help but share that. I mean, I, I think it was, I think it was called premonitions. And I really want to kind of expand on that because it, I just find that it's been happening with me a lot more lately. And, um, I mean, like recently, I mean, I have a silly example. Like I guess I recently had a dream where I was talking with a few people in my, um, I, I think my, like my mother was in the dream and I was telling her about, um, like she was eating seafood. She was, she was about to have crab, but she didn't know how to eat it. And it was like a full crab. And I was like, okay. And she was like, yeah, um, tell me how to, tell me how to crack it. And I've been to a crab boil in my life and, and like the host or whatever, um, told me how to, I guess, delve into it. And so I, I knew a little bit about it, but I remember like, I sort of like recollected that in my dream as well. And I, um, I was like, okay, so you crack it here, the body of it, and then you take these out, the little whirling parts, and she was like, ew, I, I don't want any part of that. And I, I mean, like, there was a lot else to the dream. I guess it didn't manifest. Them, but it was just a, a very, I have very strange and vivid dreams. But anyway, I wake up, and, you know, I'm just going about my day, and then I get a phone call from my mother. And she's like, um, hey, can you come by? I, um, I mean, I have crabs, but I don't really know how to delve into it. And I was like, you know, what? Just, just, you know, like, huh, like what? She usually doesn't like call me about eating crabs, but I was like, okay, um, you know, just clarify. And she was like, yeah, I... I just need to know how to do Like, I don't know what to do, like, with my hands and with the crab. I, I kind of want to eat it, but I don't know where to start. And I remembered my dream the night before, and I was like, wow. But the thing about it is, <laughs> I mean, that's just one example, and that was, like, the re- like that was just last night, which sort of prompted me to maybe, like, reach out and call, because I've been really delving into it since, because I'm just like, what? But... I've had like and similar premonitions before, and it just seems like more recently I've been having them quite frequently. And I mean, I I don't I don't really I don't really know what that means. And I mean, I I really delve. I like I try to read books. I want to, you know, delve. In. I've looked at websites like you know like Dream Moods or. You know, you know, pick your dream interpretation website. I've probably visited it with my, you know, what I've been inquiring about. I just, I'm so intrigued and a little frightened. And I guess some of the frightened bit comes from just recently, I guess, I don't know. Like a lot has been happening in my life, but I've been having, um, sort of frequent anxiety and or, you know, panic anxiety attacks. And I know that a lot of the, you know, emotional or like the, it's not so logical, these attacks, it's it's very emotionally based, but um, it's just, it's not so logical, but it it causes me a little pause. I I like, I wonder, you know, in, in some way, if any of my waking life, you know, what I'm, even daydreaming about might manifest itself. I hope not, but that's what, like, I just, I just wish I knew a little bit more about what was going on, you know, cerebrally for myself, I guess. And, and it's really hard to talk to people because they, you know, a lot of people think that this is crazy and I don't disagree with that. Like, oh, you're having premonitions. That's, that's, that's interesting. Um, it, <laughs> but I, I can't, 
I can't deny what I, I've been going through. Like I, you know, I, I guess I don't know. I don't know really who to who to go to, but dream meetings and, you know, you guys are very thorough in your podcast and, you know, what things may or may not mean. So, um, you were you were the first um, outlet that I I found it was appropriate to contact just to find out or maybe see by chance you know what any of this was about but so i think with something like this it's it's something where it's not even so much what's the meaning of a dream when you're dreaming stuff that ends up happening or that there's a connection to reality with it dream meanings i think is what you you look into when it, it is just the dream and your mind's trying to work through something and you're trying to figure out what is is going on but with something like this it is basically exactly what she said a premonition where she's connecting something with something in real life that she's unaware of un until after the dream. So what exactly that means? I don't know, but there's something for some reason that seems to be connecting her with the other people that are involved for whatever reason. She got in contact with her mom about crabs. Uh, I don't know what the meaning is behind that, but maybe there's a reason that they were in contact that night. Did you ever have a dream where, where it then per plays into real life where you had a dream about something or someone and then boom, you were in contact with them or something happened? You know, I'm racking my brain. I know we talked about in prior episodes about um, uh, death or along the lines of you have your dream of your parents dying and then sure. can't wait to talk to them. But nothing along the lines of something that uh, dreamt and actually happened. It's the more of the dream where you, somebody in your life, maybe a girl you like, you want to ask out or guy that you dream that uh, that you guys talked to. Then the next time you see that person, you almost uh, feel the need that now did that, did that really happen? Mm -hmm. Man, that dream was vivid and real, but for her, as far as saying that that happens often, uh, that's more in the realm of, of psychic like knowing yeah. what is happening. Yeah, I, I definitely would go there with it more than I do. Let's decipher the weirdness of dreams because that, that's a whole other thing. And it doesn't really always go into the world of the paranormal by any means. It's more just how our minds process uh, information. One of the craziest, and I, I don't mean crazy in a bad way, I just I say just kind of crazy in the way of like, amazing i guess stories i've ever heard about a dream was on this show a while back of a woman who was dreaming she was visiting her uh her home that i believe she grew up in and and she was walking around and going around out back and seeing where they had their campfire pit and just visiting this area in her dream uh and then in the dream there's a family there having a campfire out at the campfire pit and she's just kind of standing off in the bushes watching these people and then she wakes up and to her it was just the dream that's all all she thought of, of it she ends up in the town where this house is on on a business or something and she drives by her old house and and she decides she gets the courage to go knock on the door and say hey uh I, this is going to sound crazy but i grew up here um, I'm just really curious about, you know, what the house looks like today. You don't have to let me in or anything, but I just wanted to come up and just say hi and just, just take a closer look at the house. Uh, woman answers the door, says, oh, okay. Little boy is there. Uh, little boy, uh, she recognizes from the dream. She recognizes as being one of the children around the campfire. Little boy sees her and freaks out and goes, oh my God, mom, that's the ghost lady I was telling you about the other night that I saw when we were having the campfire. So what? So this little boy saw what he thought was a ghost standing off in the woods, watching them have this campfire the same night she was dreaming. She was visiting her home. Uh, it's one of those things where nobody's dead. It was a living person projecting themselves essentially as a ghost through this dream completely unintentionally, but one person thinking there's a ghost over there. The other person thinking they're just dreaming about their home. Uh, crazy, crazy story. But these sort of things happen and there's nearly no way to explain it. And that in the same way, I would also say there's no way to really go back and decipher that dream and go, what does this mean or that mean? It means you were visiting your house as a ghost or, or, or astral projecting or whatever you want to call it. But, um, it just uh, there's amazing things that I think can happen in that world. Uh, some paranormal, some certainly not. But uh, yeah, I, I couldn't imagine. I could not imagine being on that doorstep the moment that happened. 
I I have no words. Uh, bone that that's an understatement right there. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that would be uh, quite the experience. All right, I think that's all of our stories for today. That will wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like the show, keep us on the air. Become an EPP. Sign up over at ghostpodcast.com dot com and uh, get yourself uh, access to all 200 some bonus episodes of the show just waiting for you sign up for a yearly epp membership get yourself a bunk bed bell as well last call for those i uh, have uh, just a, a handful left so if you're wanting one of those become a yearly epp and uh, you'll get one of those upgrade from a monthly membership to a yearly uh, or if you're renewing let me know and i can get you one of those of some new stuff uh, very soon after the bunk bed bells for yearly epps so check that out ghostpodcast.com until next time for sean i'm tony thank you for listening to another episode of real ghost stories online